Hi, this is Gary. Welcome to today's video. So if you've been with me through the ink vent journey, you'd have seen on the very first day, I had this from my wife. This is a Moonman C3. Now we only took a very, very quick look at it then. So I thought I'd do a video where we'll unbox it properly. We'll explore the pen, put some ink in it, do a writing sample, then I'll give you my first impressions. So join me now, down on the mat, let's jump straight in. So let's jump straight in, let's take a look at the box. So the box is plastic. Turning it over, we've got a clip on the front. The bottom, we've got our barcode, Moon Man, so this hasn't yet been renamed to Marjon. Other than that, fairly plain, sturdy box. We'll open the clip. So the clip reveals that we've got an instruction leaflet on how to fill it. A little bit of padding. And inside, we've got the pen. And we've got this eyedropper. Now, the beauty of this pen is you can eyedropper it, but it also comes with a converter. So it's down to you what you want to fill it with. Me personally, I'm going to initially stick with the converter, but eventually, once I'm happy with the pen and I've found a really nice ink that I like with it, then I'll eyedropper it. Let's remove the pen. There we go, I'll pop that to one side and fetch in a pen rest. So the pen, let's take it out of the wrapper. And there we go. So this is the Moonman C3. I like this color, it's a transparent color. But I don't know if it comes on the camera very well. It's got a grey tint to it. So it's not plain see-through, but there's that nice tint to give it a little bit of interest. If we take a look at the parts of it, at the top we've got a flat top here. That's nice jet black colour. That comes down with a slight taper, and then we hit the transparent part of the pen. On the cap, it's straight all the way down. I can't feel I'll see any tapering. There's not really a clip as such. I think this is more of a roll stop. I like that we can see through. You know, there's the nib. We can see the nib through the pen. I think that looks really nice personally. Bottom of the cap, there's a slight drop down. I can feel that as I rub my finger over it. Then we hit the body. We come down the body. Again, it's the same width. There's no tapering. We come to another black cap, and that's what tapers down. And at the bottom, we've got another flat bottom there. Let's take off the cap. So it takes half, one, one and a half, about one and three quarter turns to come off. So not too bad, is it? And then that reveals this nib here. So this nib, gold coloured. For me, I'd have preferred a silver coloured or a steel coloured nib, but it's gold coloured, it is what it is. We'll take a closer look at the nib. So with the nib, we come down, we've got just above the breather hole, we've got some nice scroll work. We come down below that, we've got the Moon Man logo there, and then we've got Moon Man Super Quality, and it's F, because this is a fine nib. So quite a plain nib, there's nothing really exciting about it. To me, it also looks like a small nib. I would say it's possibly number five size or somewhere in that range but at the end of the day it's not the size of the nib that's important it's how well it writes from the nib we come into the section the section feels fairly slim if i hold my fingers there they're virtually touching when i hold it it's got a slight conical shape so we're coming in and then we're going out until we come up here to where the threads are now i can't feel the threads the reason i can't feel the threads at the top is I believe here down at the bottom that's where the cap threads on my concern what will that feel like as I'm writing will they dig into my finger because one of the things I do struggle with is when we have a nice pen but we've got a rough bottom of the section and because I hold my pens down near the bottom of the section they often do dig in and you know it makes it uncomfortable especially when you're doing multiple pages but we'll live with it for now we pop the cap back on I'm going to take this away and fetch in my multiple pen holder. Let's pop that Moonman C3 back there. Let's do some size comparisons. So the first pen I'm going to fetch in, it's a Pilot Metropolitan. To accompany it, 
and an effect in the Lamy Safari. Let me get these lined up at the bottom. There we go. So it's shorter than both the Safari and the Metropolitan. Let's take the caps off. So unposted, it's definitely, it's a lot shorter now. It even shorter than that Metro, and that Metro often feels quite short to me when it's unposted. Does the pen post, and what's it like compared posting? Well, it will go on there, but I don't think it's designed for posting, unlike the other two. Let's do the Metro. They all post twice and that quite nicely. So there we go, let's line them all up again. If we pop the cap on the end, it definitely now turns into a longer pen, but I really don't think it's meant to be posted. It doesn't look right to me. Let's take that off and get rid of these two pens. I'm going to leave it uncapped for now. Straighten that up. I think I've knocked it all off. So the next pens we're going to look at, we're going to look at a couple of different Moonmans. So here we are with a Moonman M600S, and I'm also going to fetch in a Moonman M800. Now I have changed the nib on the M800 so this is just a standard Joho nib but for comparison wise it still gives you an idea. So both of those pens they're definitely longer and they've got number six nibs whereas that C3 it's got that smaller nib. Let's put the caps on these so we can see them all with caps on. So there they are with the caps on. Again, that C3, it's shorter. Now, in terms of price for these, the C3 is 25 Australian dollars. The M600S is 26 Australian dollars. And the M800, that was 66 Australian dollars. So price-wise, the C3 and the M600S, well, they're virtually identical in price. Let's take these two out of the way. We'll take a look at another couple of pens. This time, they're in the same price range. So the first one I'm going to fetch in, this is a Kaigaloo 316, and that was 24 Australian dollars. Then I'll also fetch in a Pen BBS 308, and that was 27 Australian dollars. Take the caps off these, just so we can look at the nibs. Again, that C3, a lot smaller. And nib-wise, the other two, again, number six nibs. Whereas the C3, it's got that smaller nib. <laughs> and to be honest, it does look odd when you see it between the two of them. I'm now going to step away from my desk. I'm going to give the pen a good clean out. When we come back, we'll look at the ink, we'll fill it, and we'll do a writing sample. Then I'll give you my first impressions. So here I am back, the pen's being cleaned out, and what ink are we going to use? Well, I had to think about this one, and what I decided to do is use an ink that I haven't had in a pen yet. So I went, and I thought, well, let's go for red. It's still December, it's still Christmassy. Let's go for a nice red ink, Diamine Wild Strawberry. I love the name of this. I mean, I like strawberries anyway. So the thought of a wild strawberry and that gorgeous red color, I thought, yeah, I've got to use that. It's a fairly plain ink. There's no sheen and there's no shimmer or anything like that. Turning it over, I've got a chromatography strip. So we can see from here, there's a lot of pink in there, a little bit of peach. And then we've got this little bit of yellow right at the top. So a fairly interesting colour, hopefully. And given that this is a fine nib, I thought, well, it might look quite nice. So let's pop that out of the way. I'll fetch in Quickie Koala. There we go. And then Wild Strawberry take the cap off. Let's get into the pen. So as I said, this is an eyedropper pen. So there is an awful lot of threads, which is good. If I was to eyedropper this, I'd put a little bit of silicon grease on those threads, but there is the O-ring at the top as well. I'm going to use the provided converter initially. So that flows quite nicely. That's all the way down at the bottom. So in we go to the ink. And let's fetch that ink up. That was one. Down again and back up for number two. So there we have a fairly reasonable fill on that. So I'll fetch the pen back in and get rid of this ink bottle. 
In comes my notepad. This is optic paper. It's made by Oxford. And this is a black and red notebook. It's A5 size, really nice, easy pad to use for my writing samples. So let's take a look and do some writing. So we have here a moon man. C3 with that fine nib. The ink, Dimine. Wild Strawberry. It looks fairly nice in this pen. I think the pen, yes, I know it's a fine, but it looks quite a fine, fine, tending towards extra fine for me. We'll see how it goes as we do more writing. Drying times, immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Finally, one minute. So after a minute, tiniest of smudges still coming off, but yeah, I would say that's nice and dry. I'm going to move the microphone close to the paper so you can now hear the pen write. To me, that sounded like I was writing with a pencil. I quite enjoyed that. Any line variation, so this is gentle. Now I'm going to apply some pressure. So I can get a thicker line with that bit more pressure, but I'm quite happy with that normal pressure. Yes, it's a bit on the thin side, but with a gorgeous red bright ink, I think it looks quite nice. Let's do some of figures of S's. So what I'm trying to do is put some pressure on my downstrokes. So not really a lot of line variation. It's a small nib, it's a steel nib. I'm not expecting any. So what do I think of this pen? I think it looks really nice. I love the fact it's got that transparency to it. I like demonstrator pens. Even with the converter in there, I can see my ink. I don't need to worry about unscrewing that body to see what my ink level is. It's a fine nib. It's a small nib. Again, the size of the nib, yes, Sometimes the bigger nibs look nicer, but what matters is, does the pen write, does it let you get ideas out of your head and onto paper? This one does. I like the fact that I've got this red ink in there. I think that was a really good choice. I may try a couple of other red inks, but I've got to be honest, I quite like this combo already. Is there any shading? Well, not really, but it's a fine nib, so I wouldn't expect too much. I mean, I can see little bits. If we look there where I started G, there on the C, but I'm being really picky, bit on the J. So there's a little tiny bit of shading, not that much. Again, a fine nib, I'm not expecting that. The pen itself, although it looks small compared to other pens, when I've got it in my hand, it fits just about right. Yes, I'd like it to be a little bit longer, but it doesn't matter. And as we said, we can post it. There we go. But it posts just on the end of that top cap. And yes, it feels like it's steady, but the slightest tap, and that came off. Overall, not a bad pen. It's one that I've had on my list, I would think, for well over a year. So I'm glad I've got it. What I need to do now is I need to spend a bit more time using this. And I think at some time in the future, I'll do a video comparing this with a couple of other Moonman pens that I've got. I think they're quite interesting when you get the comparison with the same manufacturer. So this is my first impressions of the Moonman C3 with Dimine Wild Strawberry. Really pleased, really happy. Looking forward to spending more time using this pen. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What do you think about Moonman or Marjan pens? What do you think about the C3? I've been looking forward to this for quite a long time, so I'm really pleased that my wife got it for me. Please drop a comment down below. What are your thoughts on this brand and this pen? If you've enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Every time you like, every time you comment, 
just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.